Ladies and gentlemen, while we have pictorially introduced both our flash presenters of the day, now this, I think this thing sounds uh, fancy as it is, but I'm sure there's so much substance that's also coming your way. Allow me to first up warmly welcome our uh, first speaker, first presenter uh, with the flash, flash presentation bit. Uh, I'm going to be inviting the policy director, APAC Ripple, Rahul Advani, to take charge. Uh, he's going to be spilling beans on why a central bank digital currency matters for India. There you go, Rahul. Good evening, everyone, and thank you very much to the organizers for the invitation to speak at this Economic Times Blockchain Summit. My name is Rahul Advani, and I'm based in Singapore, and I'm the policy director for Asia Pacific at Ripple, an enterprise blockchain company. Today, I'm going to talk a bit about why a central bank digital currency, or CBDC, matters for India. Now, given the time constraints, uh, I'm not going to go into a detailed discussion on CBDCs, but instead we'll focus on the main areas that are important in the India context. That is what benefit do CBDCs bring for end users? What role do CBDCs play in the digital currency ecosystem? And what are the challenges faced with the design of CBDCs? Let's start with the benefits CBDCs bring for end users. In her budget speech last month, Finance Minister Shrimati Nirmala Sitaraman indicated that the RBI will introduce a digital rupee this year, where she stated, introduction of central bank digital currency will give a boost to the digital economy. Digital currency will also lead to a more efficient and cheaper currency management system. It is therefore proposed to introduce digital rupee using blockchain and other technologies to be issued by the Reserve Bank of India starting 2022 to 2023. Now, Ripple shares the same view with the finance minister in her assessment of the importance of a CBDC in India. And we are supportive of the RBI's efforts in developing a digital rupee. We believe that by democratizing financial systems, the same way that the internet democratized information, blockchain technology and CBDCs can bring a large segment of the unbanked or underbanked population into the global financial system and improve financial inclusion. The key here is accessibility, being able to access funds uh, without physically needing to visit a bank is essential. Another important use case is for remittances, which is especially relevant for India. According to World Bank data, India received around 83 billion US dollars in remittances in 2020, which is the highest globally. Even so, international remittances to India are costly full of friction and slow. Data from the World Bank estimates that the average cost of remittances globally is around 6.5%. So then the question is what role do CBDCs play in the digital currency ecosystem? And what are the challenges faced with the design of CBDCs? CBDCs provide a digital complement to fiat bank money and private digital currencies and support more resilient and diverse payment systems. CBDCs can serve several purposes that physical equivalents do not. Unlike cash, a CBDC could enable micropayments or otherwise be programmed for specific users to support policy goals or macroeconomic policy, such as delivering targeted financial stimulus, uh, support to individuals, uh, as well as welfare payments. CBDCs used for this purpose could be time-bound, made region-specific, or linked to specific industries to stimulate consumer demand. However, a key challenge for CBDCs is interoperability. Using standardized APIs and adopting a common set of standard protocols will ultimately be core to any successful CBDC, CBDC design and help avoid creating a closed loop system. If each central bank creates their own digital currency without interoperability in mind, we'll just be recreating the same siloed financial system that already exists today. CBDCs must be able to connect with other domestic services as well as with each other. And this is where neutral bridge currencies like XRP, which is an open source public decentralized digital asset will play a key role. Central banks that prioritize interoperability with global payment systems will ultimately be successful as end users will benefit from frictionless transactions. Now here at Ripple, we've built a CBDC private ledger 
that is based on the same blockchain technology that powers the XRP ledger, which was built for payments and designed for issuing currencies. Each central bank will have complete sovereignty and ability to customize their CBDC based on their own unique privacy and policy requirements. Neutral bridge currencies like XRP, which is an open source public and decentralized digital asset, will play a key role in facilitating such interoperability. And keeping sustainability in mind, the CBDC private ledger is carbon neutral and 120,000 times more efficient than proof of work blockchains. Ripple recently partnered with Bhutan Central Bank, the Royal Monetary Authority, to pilot a CBDC using Ripple's CBDC private ledger. The Royal Monetary Authority will pilot retail, cross-border, and wholesale payment use cases for a digital nultrum to increase financial inclusion in the country to 85%. With few specialized financial institutions, only an estimated 64% of the adult population in Bhutan has a formal savings account while a mere 16% has access to credit. This system will be built atop Bhutan's existing payments infrastructure, allowing for experimentation of a CBDC while ensuring efficient and cost-effective cross-border transfers. As the only carbon negative country in the world, the XRP ledger's native energy efficiency was also a key factor for Bhutan as it aims to continue the momentum of its economic growth without compromising on its sustainability efforts. Given the close relationship between India and Bhutan, this could be a good opportunity for the RBI. Since the nultrum is pegged one is to one with the Indian rupee, a digital nultrum will be a close, if not identical representation of the digital rupee and can provide the RBI with a very useful insight into the design and distribution of a digital rupee. Finally, it's also important to highlight that the central bank should think about their CBDC program as a platform for innovation. Once the basic CBDC capabilities are established, the platform can then be leveraged for multiple use cases beyond the basic cash alternative or interbank settlement, leveraging private sector innovations for approved use cases. In closing, I believe it is imperative that the central bank addresses these challenges by tapping into the innovation that the private sector has to offer in order to accelerate in initiatives and thereby reaping the rewards of a more vibrant and inclusive economy. So vibrant and an exclusive, inclusive economy. Data currency will be cheaper for sure, you say, Rahul. Thank you so much for those crisp nuggets, I must say. And now, ladies and gentlemen, without any ado, of course, to share his bit of insights, we will quickly be inviting Arun uh, Maharajan, the blockchain lead from UNICEF uh, Innovation, uh, who's going to be speaking on a beautiful concept of leveraging blockchain for social good. Let's all be ears and welcome you, Arun, on the screen. Over to you. I am the blockchain lead at the UNICEF uh, Office of Innovation. A special thanks to Economic Times for uh, inviting me onto this uh, summit. And I'm really looking forward to uh, addressing you today. Uh, the topic would be uh, leveraging blockchain for, uh, for social good and, and, and the role that UNICEF is uh, playing, playing in this, in this area. So for those who are not aware of uh, UNICEF, we are a 75-year-old uh, United Nations agency. So we operate in about 190 uh, countries and territories throughout the world. We are an $8 billion operation, out of which approximately 90% goes directly to our programs. And uh, interesting uh, fact, so we are the world's largest buyer of vaccines for uh, children specifically, right? So I work in a team uh, called the UNICEF uh, Ventures team. So as the name sort of suggests, we are like a venture capital arm inside the innovation team. We are a $35 million fund. We also hold some Ethereum and, and, uh, and Bitcoin. So the goal of the fund is to grow new solutions and shape the markets, especially where emerging technologies um, can you know meet a lot of people's needs so so the word that we use is uh, where emerging technologies exist at the intersection of 100 billion dollar business markets and 1 billion persons uh, needs so the variety of uh, mechanisms through which we go about this so i'll be talking a bit more about that uh, but more specifically about our blockchain related uh, work so one of the things that 
the 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 ventures team does of course we invest our funds uh, including cryptocurrency we do not take any equity uh, but we do uh, demand that uh, our investees work towards creation of digital public goods so by definition they have to be open source and they have to be um, able to meet uh, children and young people's needs in a variety of areas the, there's a lot of areas that we know work with but ultimately our goal is to uh, is for our investees to create digi digi digital public goods so unicef also happens to be uh, part of the digital public good uh, alliance uh, which is an international body tasked for the creation uh, of digital public goods as well so this is a quick cross section of our uh, scope. So there are more than 100 investments in digital public goods specifically across a variety of countries. So as, as you can see, uh, our, our uh, reach is in, uh, in what many people call the global south, where of course most, most of our funding goes as well to, uh, to help uh, children and young people. So what do we do? Um, we identify emerging technologies uh, to work with and we form partnerships with the private sector. Uh, this is beyond blockchain, but of course I'll be talking more about our blockchain specific work. We invest, as I already told you, and then we internally prototype uh, emerging technologies uh, and to see how they can be applied within the UNICEF uh, context, right? So coming to the blockchain bit, so where does blockchain and crypto figure? in this in this in this you know whole area and and especially within uh, the scope of uh, unicef so we explore blockchain and crypto to be able to do a few things so uh, we explore innovative financing models which i think blockchain is very very strong in uh, to distribute resources uh, and when there are processes involved in that to multi-party multi-step multi-authority processes we explore the applications of blockchain technology to increase the efficiency and transparency of those processes. And as I already mentioned earlier, we are very big about open source and digital public goods. So can blockchain help in the incentivization and to further encourage the you know, development uh, of, 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 uh, of such um, solutions? And, and, the, and, the, and one of the reasons why we look at this closely is um, an open source software or digital public goods uh, doesn't necessarily have a, a, a corporate business model behind it. So we need to look at other uh, ways to incentivize the creation of, of such um, digital public goods. Uh, not many people know this, but we have been in blockchain for a while now. The first experiment started in 2015. And, and since then, there has been a, a slew of activity and, and with each passing year, it is becoming stronger as, as we track what is happening globally in the ecosystem. So of course, there is a whole bunch of uh, prototypes, uh, experiments that we have run, there are crypto campaigns that we have run and, 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 and a lot of uh, uh, companies has, has, uh, has also been invested in. This is only till 2020, uh, but of course we are going pretty strong even in 2022, right? So um, we have a vehicle called the Crypto Fund, which is of course part of the, the UNICEF um, Venture Fund. It is a prototype fund which holds exclusively cryptocurrencies. So we receive cryptocurrencies from our very generous donors and we hold them and then we disperse them uh, to early stage open source uh, 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 technology startups who ultimately create solutions to benefit children and young people. So we have been doing this since 2019. So to give a quick overview, so we have invested about 1,625 Ethereum and one Bitcoin so far into a bunch of startups in a variety of emerging areas. Um, but as the slide shows a, a lot of the focus uh, has been on on blockchain itself. So I, I will be now uh, taking a few examples of of the kind of solutions that we have invested in um, blockchain solutions, where of course you can get a sense of how blockchain can be leveraged for uh, social uh, good in whichever um, context it is in. So we uh, we have invested in a company called BX Smart Labs. It is a Mexican company. So they uh, uh, 
are in the process of creating a decentralized application for saving circles. So say the, it, it is known by various names in, in you know, various countries, uh, but it's similar to like a chit fund, but, but, but at a more smaller level where uh, uh, a neighborhood, for example, could, could you know, get together and then um, 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 give a bit of their funds into this common saving circles and then ultimately can be taken out in case of emergency or you know, need. So this is a very old mechanism which has been existing even before technology was around. But uh, BX Smart Labs is taking it on to the blockchain. And, and of course, we invest in early stage startups, so, uh, so uh, uh, they're, they're still in the piloting mode and they've done a whole bunch of pilots uh, in, in Mexico. Now, what I want to specifically focus here is, of course, the blockchain part, right? So why blockchain? So traditionally, such uh, saving circles is a localized person-to-person, uh, in-person, face-to-face phenomenon. And, and, and if it goes onto the blockchain, the mechanisms can be replicated there, bringing, bringing in more efficiency, of course, but more importantly, it can now have a global reach. Like you, you need not be limited only to your, uh, your neighborhood uh, or your family. It can even go beyond that. So thereby expanding the size of the saving circle potentially and, 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 and opening the doors for any new mechanisms which can be built in. Ultimately, the goal is to enable um, uh, people in our uh, uh, program countries to uh, get into the habit of saving and then to uh, become more financially um, independent, right? So, so this is this is one example. We have invested in a company called Kotani Pay. It's a Kenyan company. Uh, they are an off-ramping service. Uh, in other words, they help convert uh, crypto uh, to the local uh, fiat currency. And they do it using a very simple interface uh, that does not need the requirement of even an internet connection or a bank account. So it is through SMS uh, and the USSD interface through the, fee the feature phones. And they have done a whole bunch of transactions, 23,000 transactions worth half a million and then, and then, and then, and then so on. Now, um, why blockchain here, right? So the big answer is financial inclusion. So this is, of course, uh, Kenya is in East Africa, and then a lot of countries in East Africa, many of them do not have uh, bank accounts. Uh, mobile money, though, has been around for more than a decade, and, and it has been a sizable success. But if we can connect crypto with mobile money, then crypto can be accessible to a whole lot of people. Now, what can crypto itself be used for? There are various possibilities, for example, uh, foreign remittances are pretty big here. So one can even imagine this being applied in a, in a, in a foreign remittance scenario where, where a family member who is, who is, who is, who is you know, living somewhere in the West could, could you know, send you some money in crypto and then they use this service to convert it to the mobile wallet money, for example. Right? So, so, so this is a fantastic use case for financial inclusion, uh, especially in areas with the low internet or even no internet and, and, and where it is tough to access um, bank accounts. Um, Leaf Global is a Rwandan company. It is a virtual bank of sorts, uh, but specifically targeted to um, vulnerable uh, populations. So they work with uh, a lot of refugee population in Rwanda, Uganda, Kenya. Uh, again, uh, they are more uh, in, the, in the East African um, region. Uh, so they have reached uh, 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 7,000 users and they have scaled it up to four countries so far. Uh, so why blockchain? Again, it's similar financial inclusion, but they have a specific focus on refugees, the unbanked, underbanked um, section, uh, section of the population. Uh, they, they have even run a few experiments using NFTs, for example, to, uh, I mean, as, as we know, NFTs is, you know, going pretty crazy nowadays. So they have actually worked with some refugees to uh, make them do artwork and then see if it can be sold uh, to um, um, uh, give them a source of income. So, so there's, a, there's a whole lot of experiments happening in the you know, Web3, Web3 space. Uh, this is just another mechanism for financial inclusion. Rumzan is a Nepali uh, startup. Uh, they are in the area of uh, uh, emergency response and providing aid. Uh, 
especially through a blockchain based mechanism for digital cash and digital um, vouchers um, so uh, you can imagine in a country like nepal or you know in, um, even in other countries there could be natural disasters or there could be man made disasters which needs response from uh, humanitarian agencies relief workers and then aid to be given um, a proven method is is direct cash transfer uh, uh, which has been around for a very very long time right so they are looking at applying blockchain why blockchain so they are looking to apply blockchain in this area to bring in a certain higher level of accountability through transparency and traceability of course which the open shared public ledger of a blockchain can provide uh, it also makes it easier to reconcile payments because they uh, they also play the role of interconnecting various stakeholders in the ecosystem right so you have the main aid, aid agency then you have the implementing partners uh, you could have um, uh, vendors or merchants who provides uh, goods and services to the people in need and of course the people themselves so all of these stakeholders are are are, are interconnected on the shared ledger and which makes it simpler for uh, reconciling payments ultimately and of course uh, reporting is also a very big part of it uh, which can also be made uh, more more accessible right then treacher is a pretty interesting uh, setup they are an iranian company they uh, have created an open protocol to basically connect funders throughout the world with people who plant trees um specifically in rural areas uh, so they use a whole bunch of uh, web3 uh, possibilities uh, smart contracts defi nfts um to empower these communities so um the uh, they've again just started the genesis launch was in january but there's a lot of commitment already that they are seeing and a, and a, and a lot a lot of traction so why blockchain here firstly blockchain um provides access to global capital because um, by definition public blockchains don't really have a jurisdiction so anybody anywhere uh, can get access into a, into a block blockchain network right you can you can get access to a crypto through a variety of means so now all of these uh, crypto natives are now accessible um, and of course that capital is accessible as well which is which is fantastic um, as compared to traditional means of access to uh, capital so in a sense uh, a blockchain network where there is a lot of traction helps connect supply with demand here uh, uh, supply is of course of of you know crypto demand is whatever uh, in in, the, in this particular case whatever um, uh, measures we need to take to combat um, the climate change phenomenon that we are seeing in the, in this case they are of course planting trees but as we know climate change is a real phenomenon that you know seems to be accelerating there are uh, flash floods and and you know fires and you know so on that you can uh, see on the see on the news and uh, planting trees of course may not be sufficient but but at, at least it is it is it is it is it is a, a small contribution right so now this process can be made much more smoother of course bringing in accountability how accountability uh, for example previously if you can donate some money towards somebody who says they plant trees then we wouldn't know uh, whether they actually planted trees or we'll have to do a follow up or they'll have to take the initiative to to publish their results uh, on some website or, or through an emailer or you know something like that here the idea is to tag each tree as an as an nft and to empower the farmers to actually give give um, uh, updates right and of course uh, because they're nfts they also open themselves up to um, further financing options through the sale of nfts as well so in a, in a sense you actually can sort of own a tree uh, that you are that you are funded so 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 this this increases the the accountability as well as the ownership then uh, this will be my last slide uh, for the for for the startups itself so there's a uh, argentinian startup called excapit who we funded they are uh, a crypto startup where they use cryptocurrencies and blockchain to help create uh, uh, financial planning mechanisms savings mechanisms wealth management including access to a variety of financial services 
um, uh, and they have decent traction. A few thousand users um, uh, have, are you know, using that platform right now. Why blockchain? Of course, financial inclusion, without saying access to global capital, we already spoke about it. But in, the, in this case, uh, they have a, 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 a big um, initiative for educating their users on the variety of financial mechanisms available. Um, I mean, we, we do know that traditional finance has been around for a while, but, but not everybody has the kind of financial literacy um, um, that, is, that is there. Um, I, I don't know why that is, maybe because it's not taught directly in schools possibly, but with the, with the rise of crypto, um, we are seeing that there is, there is you know, a huge scope to, 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 to educate people on you know, financial mechanisms. Savings, I already sp spoke about it earlier with the you know, first startup as well. Um, savings and 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 uh, quick loans, or you know how to think about loans, how to think about returns, and then and then and then so on and so forth. Ultimately, leading to uh, financial safety and then financial independence, which is of course very important for the lives of children. Even though children themselves may not use such an app, their parents or their relatives uh, would hopefully be using this, and indirectly it will benefit uh, the lives of children and young people. So um, this is a cross section of the kind of work that people around the world are doing where they are leveraging blockchain for social good. I hope it gave a bit of a flavor uh, of, the, of, of, of what all is out there. Um, we also do internal projects, as I told you earlier, for example, uh, in UNICEF Kazakhstan, there was a prototype built to explore blockchain for improving transparency and efficiency in cash transfers. I only mentioned this with the you know, Nepalese startup earlier, um, uh, where we uh, wanted to see if it can improve the you know, processes, right? So first is obviously um, the transparency that a blockchain can bring, where we tokenize uh, certain assets on the blockchain, which you can then uh, track, right? Then, um, uh, in in you know processes like this, there are a whole bunch of author authorizations and signatures, and and processes and departments which are you know involved. So when we can bring the signing of these uh, 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 forms onto the onto the blockchain, then uh, then that creates an auditable trail of uh, of of authority in some sense, which can in turn be audited by some other authority who is not part of the process for compliance uh, reasons. And finally, uh, there are uh, uh, business rules to be followed beyond the beyond the authority. So these can be encoded in smart contracts, right? So this this is this is an, uh, one of the internal uh, prototypes uh, which which we have uh, uh, tried to uh, work with, you know, blockchain technologies. Mm -hmm. Then uh, uh, this will be my last slide. So. We have an initiative called Kiga, which is a joint initiative between UNICEF and the International Telecommunication Union. The mission is very simple to connect every school in the world to the internet and therefore every young person to information opportunity and choice. Um, so how we go about it is we first map all the schools globally. Um, of course, this is a, a very long term project, as you can imagine, but on the right hand side, I hope you can see the GIF, which, 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 which is a quick graphic of a mapping, for example. So th this is in the, in the north of uh, South American continent. So after we do the mapping, we look at financing, how to raise funds. Then, 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 then once the funds have been raised, we look at um, engaging with vendors and service providers to connect these schools to the to the internet and once the schools have been connected to the internet we can of course deliver a variety of um, uh, digital uh, 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 programming to empower the young people right now what is blockchain to do with this again so the obvious one is financing so we are exploring a variety of um, um, financing models web3 financing models uh, to see how we can sustainably uh, raise raise funds no so one of the experiments which is uh, which we are looking at is to see if 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 we can uh, get into the ethereum uh, staking model for example if we if we run a staking node for example uh, can that through the staking mechanism generate enough uh, returns which can in turn be used to um, 
engage with the you know, vendors and to you know pay them to bring in connectivity to, to to schools right so so this is one of the sustainable models that we are exploring experimenting to see if it will it will you know yield the kind of results that we think it will then we also did a quick nft sale i put a picture of one of those nfts on the on the right it's called patchwork kingdoms uh, this was a tremendous success uh, where we um, where where uh, it it was it's sort of interesting we actually used the used the mapping data to generate that that picture that you see on see on the right uh, where on the top of the middle line are are, are sort of a, digi um, a digital visual representation of schools which have internet connectivity and at the bottom are schools which do not so this is of course true for a specific region and like this uh, the, uh, there were, I think, 999 NFTs um, minted and then sold, each one representing a particular region of the world. Um, then the next area is in connecting. So with the funds raised in the, in, the, in the previous step, we can, of course, naturally explore smart contract mechanisms for fair and automated payments to vendors based on actual performance right so we can have mechanisms where the internet connectivity is measured without any human intervention and then linked to a smart contract which is holding onto the funds and it will release the payment depending on the quality of the of the internet delivered so the hope is that this mechanism will keep the internet uh, service providers and the vendors on their tours and then hopefully they will ensure uh, a high uh, quality of of internet availability then an interesting aspect of blockchain is the community itself because there is a rising uh, generation of crypto natives who really care about 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 you know causes and and you know willingness to take part in those causes not just as financiers but much more than that uh, like they do they do talk about it you know they uh, talk to the network uh, some people may even uh, contribute uh, code uh, because we are uh, very big on open source anyway so the world can contribute so 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 that is that is you know perfect so so that, that is there is uh, an aspect of community uh, uh, which which is becoming more and more important as more and more uh, people get into uh, crypto and blockchain when they start i mean they make their own wallets and then and then start buying crypto to start with and then whatever activities that they are doing so so this is something that that we are seeing as well and 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 it is very very interesting for us to keep in mind uh, yeah so that uh, brings me to the end of my presentation i hope it was interesting and uh, i really do hope that there was something for you guys to take away from from whatever examples i spoke about uh, i hope it it was able to open up your minds about how this technology can be applied for a variety of social causes and and then and then the financing mechanisms and then so on so uh, i hope you enjoyed that uh, to learn more of course you can you can follow those uh, links that are on the screen yeah that's about it thank you so let the conversations continue. Arun, uh, those were some motivating investment numbers that you shared with us initially, along with the social good uh, facet of uh, blockchain, accountability and ownership and those um, uh, wonderful use cases, examples that you also shared with us. Uh, what a refreshing take indeed. Uh, thank you so much. I'm sure I help for our audience there. And ladies and gentlemen, as they say that all's well, that ends well. We will round up our summit with the closing keynote address. For the final time today, may I humbly request you all to stay tuned. We'll just be right back.